And by the way, I have to note, when we come to Phoenix, it is synonymous with Mark Zuckerman, our ultimate Masson insider. Mark, you grew up out here in the Valley of the Sun. Uh, in some ways, welcome back home. And it's good to be sharing this time with you on the heels of a wonderful couple of days for our ball club at Nationals Park. Yeah, first of all, Bob, to be here with the roof open and temperatures <laughs> this nice, this does not happen. So enjoy this this weekend, everybody. Uh, yeah, look, that was a big homestand for them. And the way they closed it off, obviously, was really big. And I thought very interesting those three wins to cap off the Cubs series in each of them they took the lead in the seventh inning or later we've talked so much this year about how they haven't scored a lot late in games maybe you're starting to see that come together a little bit and when you do that everybody's in a good mood we've seen the home run wig that uh, they throw out there for big celebrations like that it's a long happy flight out west and the clubhouse is kind of rocking this afternoon it's Cinco de Mayo I'll just say that say they're having some fun with that it's amazing what a little bit of winning can do for a young group that's hungry, wants to do well, and is starting to come together as a team. Yeah, how much fun was that? Yeah, it was a long flight, Mark. I know you took one yourself. Four and a half hours uh, takeoff at Dulles to touchdown here. I think it was about 7.30 Pacific last night when the Nationals got here. Now, Chase Field is interesting. I kind of liked it when they called it the Bob, the Bank One ballpark when it opened back in 98, but it's always been a place where the ball flies a little bit. Whether the roof is closed or open, you can hit some home runs here. The Nats are 32 and 22 over the years here. And Mark, coming off a homestand with momentum, might we see some fireworks in this yard? Well, they would certainly hope to see that finally, Bob. We know they've struggled to hit the ball out of the park. With maybe a little bit of a glimmer of hope here recently. You saw a couple big home runs uh, during that homestand. Obviously, Alex calls but Lane Thomas is off the schneid finally with his first couple of the season and that was a big one yesterday to run homer the ball does travel here especially with the roof open uh, maybe an opportunity in the dry air to get a little something going and it's amazing you know they didn't do a whole lot offensively yesterday but they scored all their runs on the home run it makes such a difference all it takes sometimes is one big swing at the right moment and you don't have to string together three four even five hits just to play a couple runs that's been more their mo here this season but maybe an opportunity this weekend in this ballpark roof open to hit a few balls in the air and actually score runs in bunches yeah not to be forgotten in that game yesterday the absolute delight of giving three runs getting three runs with one swing on the lane thomas home run early in the game all right if you watch twitter all the online stuff some folks are saying davy's killing these relievers they're not going to be able to comb their hair next week they're all going to get hurt you know mark it's an interesting thing harvey and finnegan have gone three games in a row do you have any sense of who's available who's not or is that a decision that might get made maybe two hours from now tonight based on a situation when you might have a chance to win a fourth game in a row. Well, I think even though Dave was a little bit coy about it this afternoon, I think it's pretty clear. Those two guys are not seeing the field tonight, even if they insist that they're good. I talked to Hunter Harvey this afternoon about it, though. He was, uh, the results obviously were not what he wanted, but he was really pleased with how he felt and the fact that for the first time in his career, he was given the chance to pitch three straight days. We know about all the injury history with him. It's a big deal for him to be able to go to a manager and say, hey, I am good if you need me in the right situation. And while the results were not what he wanted, he insisted that it had nothing to do with the workload. He said he just didn't execute his pitches right. And he came out of that game and said, all things considered, he thought that he felt pretty good and even today felt better than he expected. I said, well, you know, if David comes to you, are you going to say yes? He said, well, I'll say yes, but I have a feeling that David Martinez probably is going to take a little better care of him than that. So if they get in that situation, we'll see who it is. Mason Thompson, Carl Edwards Jr. Davey acknowledges some of these other guys are going to have to pitch in situations of consequence. But he didn't hesitate to call those guys yesterday because they said they felt good. And the performance, the results maybe weren't good, but physically they said they felt fine. Well, and there are some other arms out there that are pretty good power arms as well. So... We'll see how that plays out. I guess it's a good thing for us to be talking about. It's better than having nobody available in the bullpen when you've just lost four out of five or something like that. Now, Josiah Gray tonight. He's gone six innings three times in his starts already this year. Just a few of the D-backs have faced him before he uh, pitched against them last year at Nationals Park. But when this kid gets any run support at all, Mark, he's been amazing. 157 ERA his last five times out. And finally, the last couple of times, they have scored some runs for Josiah. Yeah, I mean, he 
let's be honest, probably deserves to have at least four or five wins at this point. But when you lose one nothing, two nothing, the way that he did those first few starts, what can you do about it? To his credit, he never once complained about any of that. The lack of run support kept going up and putting up as many zeros as he could. And now you're finally starting to see a little bit of support from these guys know how good he and Mackenzie Gore have been. They want to support them. They want to give them whatever they can. Uh, it, but we just talked about the bullpen situation. I think this is a big start for Josiah. In the back of his mind, he probably knows that the bullpen is short tonight. If he can go out and give at least six, maybe even get to the seventh inning, I think mm. Davey would be willing to push him if he's having effectiveness. In this ballpark, keep it in the yard. That's the key for him. He's been really good at that since his first start of the year. Only one homer allowed. If he can do that tonight, he's going to be in a good position to get another win. And you keep reminding me of things about yesterday's game. One of the unsung heroes, Patrick Corbin, who, in essence, saved a big part of the bullpen by going seven in that game. Mark, thanks for your time. We love your work on MassInSports.com. And uh, thanks for your insight as we get ready for this series. Thank you, Bob. Good luck to you tonight. All right. We'll need it up here. I got.